Would you take a half a million dollars if at all time there was a snail that if it touched you would kill you? It always follows you, but at the speed of a snail. That's a terrifying prospect. I would not a, take that. A million dollars is not enough money for that. It's, ha it's not even a million. It's half. So the idea is if you stopped, it would eventually catch you. Right. You can never stay in one place for too long. And I'm all about staying in one place all the time. It's $10 million, actually. Okay, okay, well, the one that I saw was half a million. Everybody's immediately trying to subvert it. Obviously, it's not so easy that you can yeah, just put you... a bowl on it. Otherwise, this wouldn't be a challenge. If the challenge was like, okay, here's a bunch of money, but also you can very easily solve this problem by putting some salt on right. it, then it wouldn't be a thing. Like this mythical beast or like entity that gave you this deal is like, oh, I didn't think I of didn't that. I didn't think of that, yeah. You, <laughs> you got me out. <laughs> The whole fun of those are the loopholes. That is absolutely not true. It's like if I said, would you rather like lose your sight or lose your taste? And you'd be like, well, I'd rather no, lose my taste because the sense of smell is more closely tied to taste than the actual sense of taste. You know what? Fuck you. What do you value more? Your eyes or your freaking tongue? All right. Or if it was like hearing and sight and then, but the answer is we can actually just replace your hearing medicinally after you lose yeah. it. I would get surgery. I'd get a cochlear implant. No, yeah. you can't. Because then it ends up being this like 50 minute discussion where you're like, no, it's actually a universe where cochlear implants are true or they don't exist yet. And you're like, well, I'd invent them then using the technology that we have in our universe. And you're like, it's crazy, man. For That's the snail thing, train of thought. I think the realistic thing that you would do is maybe like calculate the, the walking speed. We're obviously assuming that the snail is immortal. Uh, and then with your $10 million, you would like buy two different places across oh, the world. So you would buy like a place in Australia and a place in like, you know, America. And then, you know, you know the length of the Pacific Ocean or the, the breadth well, of the Pacific Ocean. you need to tag the thing though. You need to know where it is. No, you just, you just calculate it. And then... How, uh, how do you know where it starts? You don't well, want to I mean, see it, it might be too well, late. Well, you, no, you, you stand in like a field first so you can see where it is. And then you know that's your starting point. So you can calculate okay. it from there. Immortal teleporting snail. Now that's it terrifying. teleports... It always oh, teleports God. within five to ten feet of you. No, I would not take $10 That's million dollars some SCP that shit. Thing. That's like, here's $10 million, but actually Hellraiser's real, and you just <laughs> opened the puzzle box, and also demons are going to rip you in half any moment now. Right, yeah. I don't want that. I don't want to live in a world like that. I think there is almost certainly no amount of money in which I would want to be followed by Satan, uh, <laughs> but in snail form. <laughs> Even if I were the richest man by orders of magnitude, in history, no amount of money makes Satan go away. And I'll just get a guy to eat the snail. The snail is immortal. Yeah, it'll pass through his gastrointestinal system, come out the other side, and still try to kill you. Does the snail have to touch bare skin? Okay, you guys are asking <laughs> all the wrong questions here. We already covered the loophole portion of this. You're gonna put yourself in a freaking like a suit of stone. That would be kind of badass though to live in a suit of stone for a while. I say put the snail in a cage. No, you can't do it. Put the snail in a sarcophagus. Okay, let's let's replace the snail with like a ghost that moves at the speed of a snail. Now, what's your freaking what's your loophole? Uh, Egon. Yeah, the Ghostbusters aren't real though. Oh. That was also I was planning for that as the first rebuttal. That's the Get end. Get a friend to catch the snail, place it in a box, and put it in a safe deposit box. And move on. <laughs> <laughs> you don't get to be an omnipotent being by having such obvious loopholes. You know what? This is how it would work if this was like a real genie or something. You'd be like, okay, here's your $10 million. And you'd be like, check this shit out, genie. Put the snail in a box. And then your friend touches it and your friend turns into like a fucking black hole. And it's oh like, oh my oh, god, that's terrible. The loophole is if a snail touches someone that's not you because of your actions, it becomes a black hole and renders the universe like completely... It unusable oh, and destroyed. So and you'd be like, well, Genie, you didn't tell me about- Well, you didn't play by the fucking rules in the first place. The snail's supposed to follow you, you tried to cheat, and you got busted. You ever see Jumanji? That's what happens. You start turning into a little uh, gorilla man. Like a ghost. If you were about to be turned into a black hole and the snail is gonna chase me, I would let the snail chase me so you don't turn into a black hole. Yeah. And apparently it takes 37 years for a snail to cross between America and Australia. You could live like a whole fucking life and then just fly away. I'd worry away. though. I'd be so worried that it would be faster for some reason, like it would get caught up in the jet stream or something. That's a good point.